Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the ADAC Rescue Helicopter Station here in Ulm in the south part of Germany. I'm here today with my friend and pilot Jens Jasper, who you might have seen in previous videos that we published on my channel about helicopters. Today I have the privilege to perform an outside check with Jens of his Airbus H145 helicopter. We want to give you the chance to get a close-up view of the H145 and see what pilots have to look out for as they perform their outside check. So what are we waiting for? And let's get started. Jens, as the pilot in command, has to perform this extensive outside check before the first flight of the day. During an emergency call-out, the HEMS TC will do a brief walk around just before takeoff. But now on to Jens who will talk you through this video. Right, so the, uh, the first thing we do is uh, check the so-called NACA inlet, which is a air inlet that is clear and not obstructed. Then we have the fuselage underside with the OET sensor and antennas. We check the general condition of uh, the lower side of the fuselage. Then we move on to the skids and uh, check for uh, the fairing and the dampers. There's no oil leaking from them. Check the, uh, uh, the condition of the um, cross tubes, so called skid cross tubes. Check the condition of the step and the skids. Again, antenna condition, fuselage underside. Then we see for the doors, they are secured and functioning properly. Then we move on to the cabin top. Check the upper part of the cabin. Check the windshield, cockpit window, upper part. Then we again have a Naka inlet, which is clear. Antennas. And then we move on to the so-called hydraulic compartment. So there's the hydraulic compartment. We have two hydraulic reservoirs, one in the front and one in the aft. Check for the fluid level and that there is sufficient fluid and no air bubbles inside. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the hydraulic actuators in the back. Check the condition of the actuators. You have these so-called ZEMAS. You have to see that they are free. And control rods over here. This one's for the collective, which is not supposed to move. The other ones have to be playing freely. You have the oil cooler which is clear and you can also check whether it is turning and then we can close the hydraulic compartment check the rotor blades for general condition check that the erosion stripes are not uh, worn and, um, and loose maybe so you check those on all four blades so you check the so-called rotating control rods. See that they are playing freely. You have the bolts and 
check that they are secured. They have the swash plate scissors. They are fixed, have no play. You check the swash plate itself. Swash plate is where the magic happens. <laughs> so that is the most essential part. So which, which basically enables the helicopter to fly and move as it does. You have the various bolts that have to be secured. You have the oil level of the main rotor head. But you have this only with the D2 variant and not the D3 variant. And of course you have all the wirings and you have uh, the so-called main rotor hub, which has to be fixed and secured. The vibration absorbers that have to move freely. You check that blade for blade. Next thing is we check the main transmission oil level and the general condition of the main transmission compartment. There you can see the mixing lever assembly, which is also shown from the transmission compartment and the rotor brake fluid level. We move on to the main transmission compartment. Here we check the oil cooler. There's the inlet duct. No foreign objects in here. The insulation is in good condition. So is the oil cooler itself. We have the engine oil tank. Fluid level is good. Then we can see the so-called mixing level assembly from over here, plus the hydraulic pump. Okay, no leakage. The main transmission struts. They are firm. There's the inlet barrier filter that is uh, separating particles from the air, like dust and sand. In the back there is the oil filter clogging indicator, which is good. Well, you just check the general condition, no oil leakages, nothing loose. Generator air intake is clear. Then we have the provisions for the rescue hoist, which is not installed, so they have to be covered. Then we move over to the engine compartment. Now we check the general condition of the engine compartment. See that there are no cracks, no leakages. Nothing chafes. See that everything is firm and fixed. Check the uh, so-called main transmission drive shaft, which has to be freewheeling in one direction, but driving the, ro the rotor in the other direction. So oh, wow. if I turn it that way, I can like turn the whole rotor which is just like what the engine does when it's running. So that is perfectly fine. Check that hoses are fixed. Fuel and oil lines are without leakages or cracks. Exhaust is also mounted firmly. So 
So maintenance step is closed. Aft cross tube, just the same. Fixed and secured. Also in good condition, and the step is in good condition. There we have the drain holes and the, uh, the drain plug for the pitot static system, which has to be covered. EPU door is closed. We can attach the EPU if necessary. The circuit breaker is in. Strobe light, avionic cooling outlet, static ports, battery compartment, the battery is attached, there you can see the um, so-called black box which is orange actually. Then you have the um, fire extinguisher bottles. Mm -hmm. You check the level of both fire extinguisher bottles. Nice. And then you have the exhaust pipe, which is clear. Mm -hmm. We move on to the clamshell doors and check their condition. Avionics rack. Genau, da, da oben drüber ähm, sind die Avionics. Das ist das Avionics rack. Ist fixed. Then you have the, um, well, with this helicopter you have to, to check that the ELT is armed mm -hmm. over here. So if this cover stands like this, yeah. then the ELT is not armed because the uh, safeguarded switch is standing outside. Okay. So it's, okay. when this is plain, then the ELT is armed. You can see the deployable ELT back here. First aid equipment, even a rescue helicopter <laughs> has to have a first aid kit. Then you have the tail boom. No cracks, no dents. Antenna, VOR antenna. The antenna for the tactical radio, so in order to communicate with the uh, ambulance or fire brigade and uh, and our dispatch. Condition is good. The uh, right hand horizontal stabilizer. Fix. Position light. And then I think we have to go get a ladder. <laughs> Okay, so you have the uh, Fenestron structure that has to be without cracks, dents, no proof of any obstacles that have, might have been hit, for instance. General condition. Then you have to see that the uh, tail rotor is actually centered within the Fenestron. So you check the spacing of the blades and the, there is no chafing, there has not been any chafing at all. So this is the general condition. And then you check blade for blade for condition. Okay. The hub has to be fixed and you should be able to turn the whole rotor by turning the tail rotor. Okay.
static discharger. Again, the general condition of the tennis front aft section. Position light. And again, no cracks, no dents. We move on to the left side. Again, the general condition, no cracks. There you have the uh, T-rotor actuator, T-rotor compartment with a fluid level, mm -hmm. T-rotor transmission oil fluid level, T-rotor actuator, there are no leakages, no hydraulic fluid, the lines are good. No damages, no debris, no foreign objects. This is the stator. That is, that is fixed. And you check that is, it is still fixed. <laughs> and also the cover is fixed. Left hand horizontal stabilizer. Fixed. Position light. Again, tail boom. Left side. Condition. Antenna. Exhaust pipe. Condition. No foreign objects. Again, you have the static ports. The doors, hinges. Drain ports, and we move on to the cross tube and fuselage underside. Skids, skid step, antennas, and again we have the engine compartment. We briefly sped up this part as the procedure is the same as Jens did on the right hand engine. So the items to look out for are the same as on the other side. Uh, main fuel filler cap. It's closed. Then have we antennas. Then skid damper and fairing. Cross tube. Skid. Um, the wiring of the high intensity searchlight. High intensity searchlight mounting. Pedal area, VHF antenna, nose, windscreen. So this wraps up the outside check of the Airbus H145. I hope you got some really great insights by Jens. And Jens and I actually have something more planned in the future. That's great having had you. Um, there will be one more video in the future and I will uh, see if Joey might even be able to fly a H145 in the simulator. Correct, and on that bombshell, here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot, fixed wing and rotary wing <laughs> is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe. Jens Jasper. <laughs>